Well, I offer grace and peace to you in the name of Christ on this epiphany, a word that represents the day when Jesus the Christ was made manifest, not to just his own people, but the whole people, the whole cosmos, you might say, through the visitation of the Magi, who in some ways stand in for us all, these mysterious wise ones from afar who came and then took what they saw when they arrived and brought it back out into the world. Welcome to this space of worship. Wherever you are can become a space of worship. It just takes a little intention. This is a worship time for those of all ages. One of the advantages of this format is that it allows you to pause as you need to do things or collect things as you might want to do in just a few moments. Anything that will help this time be more worshipful. Perhaps you simply need to hit pause and take some time in quiet prayer. Feel free to do so. In a moment, you might want to pause to get a couple of specific items and I'll notify you when it's time to do so. For example, I've got a, a candle here representing the light, the light of Christ that is with us always. I'll be lighting it in a little bit. This particular candle is a scented one. You might choose the same if that's something that agrees with you. As a reminder in our senses of the fragrant gifts that the Magi brought the Christ child on Epiphany. You might also take a moment uh, when you're paused to Grab a songbook or a hymnal if you have one, or look up on the device you're using the lyrics to We Three Kings, which we'll play in just a few moments. Of course, you're also free to simply listen instead and not read or sing along. It's up to you. On that note, you should feel free to simply listen and not watch at all. Perhaps you stare out the window at a lovely scene or the decorations that are still in your own home Perhaps you go and get a picture or two that bring a loved one close. Whatever it is that makes this worship feel worshipful, I encourage you to do that. It's your time. It's our time together to encounter God. So I invite you now, if you'd like to hit pause. And when you're ready, come back and we'll continue. Let's begin by lighting that candle. It's a reminder of the light of Christ that burns within us and is around us and is loose in the world for us to find and be warmed by. We remember on this day the light that shines in the darkness, and that is not overcome it. And we allow our body to experience the light and the warmth and perhaps even the scent of this candle. For God meets us in this material world, this world of senses. Now we continue with the sharing of this well-known song. Behold him arise, King and God and 
sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceed. Amen and amen as we come back together into this place, this space, shared space, even across this distance of worship. There are a couple of lovely traditions that accompany this holy day. One is baking what's called a king cake in honor of Christ, who we know and proclaim as king. I I found, excuse me, and therefore you can find a recipe that you can bake a king cake start to finish in but one hour. I encourage you to look up recipes that are either that quick or ones that take longer. And if you need help, I'm happy to share mine with you. Just contact me at the church. The cake is filled with meaning. The traditional colors for the sprinkles that often go atop are purple, green, and gold. And those colors carry various meanings. To some, the purple stands for justice, for doing what's right for all. Green for faith or trust in God. And gold for power. Not the kind of power that you often see displayed in the world, the power that hurts or pushes around, but the power that uplifts and amplifies and stands alongside those who some might call weak. The other special thing about this cake is that when baked, the family who bakes it puts this little figure of a child, a babe inside, meant to represent the Christ child. Some, like the ones I have, you can even put in before baking and it's perfectly safe. And so when those gathered eat of the cake, one person will find that in their slice. So chew carefully. And there are all kinds of traditions that go along with it. For some, they put a crown on the person who finds it, usually a child in the family. And they are queen or king for the day or the night. Some say that the person who finds the child in their slice hosts the epiphany party for the next year. What I like to do is have that child who finds the peace to play a special role in that worship moment. So perhaps it's reading the story of the Magi from the Bible or telling it in their own words, or even just changing the light in the Advent wreath, those five candles we light leading up to Christmas. They stay lit until Epiphany. And we don't say we put them out, we say we change the light. For the light of God, the light of God in Christ never goes out. It always is burning, it just changes in appearance. And we carry it with us wherever we go. 
but we changed the light in the advent wreath for the final time on Epiphany. And the person who finds the child in their cake may do that this night. By the way, if you have trouble finding any of these, again, you can ask me at the church and I have enough for every family to have one or more. The other tradition I like to share on this night is called chalking the doors. It's an old tradition and it harkens to the notion of someone journeying and looking for a welcome home, a place to be. And what you would do is you would write on your door, perhaps safely on the glass of your door or even making a sign with paper and marker, or pen or pencil. And you write something very specific and it all has meaning. You essentially write the year that you've just begun, now that it's a new year, and the letters C, M, and B. In fact, it's a little more complicated than that. You put 20 for the first two letters of the year, then what looks like a plus, but is actually a version of the cross. So 20 plus, the cross being the sign of God's love. Then the letter C, I'll tell you what that means in a moment. Then another cross, so 20, cross, C, cross, M, cross, B. I'll review that again. 20, the first two numbers of the year, cross or plus, C, cross M, cross B, cross, and then the final two years of the year, 22. 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 22. Now, what do those letters mean? They're said to stand for the names of the Magi given in the legend, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. They also stand for a phrase in Latin, Christus mansionem benedicat, Christ bless this house or bless this home. And so by putting this on a door or a window of a church or home or a room in a home, it's a way of inviting God into where we live and where we dwell for the year ahead. So if you'd like, you could pause now and gather some materials and do your own chalking of the door or making of a sign and placing that on a door or a window. You can take as long as you need. And when you're finished, you can resume. Well, now all of this, all of this begins and continues with a story. And in fact, there are wider tellings of this story than appear just in scripture. Of these ancient wise ones who discerned the ways of the stars, who were visited by a great light from far away. They weren't near where the Christ child was being born. And they were beckoned to come and follow and follow they did. They prepared for their journey by immersing themselves in a pool and they followed the light and the light gave them all that they needed wherever they went. When they were hungry, hungry, it provided them food, thirsty, drink, energy, it gave them energy. And it led them to a dark place where a child had just been born. And as they approached and looked in, the light entered the child and became the child. And what they experienced there was very mysterious but it changed them. And so as they left that place, they carried the message of the Christ child out into the world, sent to proclaim the good news that had come. And that light, that child is with us still, has spread throughout all the land, indeed was already throughout all the land. And that good news stays with you wherever you go. So let us say a prayer now. Oh God, enter the lives of all of us here. Bring your light into this world wherever is needed. Bring with it enlightenment 
and understanding. May we grow, O oh God, in kindness and in strength to do what is right. Be with us in all our journeys this year, whatever they may bring. Amen. And the light in me recognizes the light in you. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he may his face to shine upon you. May she lift up her countenance to you and give you peace. Amen. And be well. <laughs>